Uh, hello there, we are uh, here at the BW Healthcare's uh, second annual uh, summit and we have with us uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Arjun Dang. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, Dr. Dang, you've been the winner of 40 Under 40 twice now. They say you've been, uh, you got nominated and you won twice. Uh, so uh, first tell me about this award and um, you won it twice, how are you feeling? And uh, what has been the work that you've been doing for past few years which has led for this one? Thank you. Thank you, Shivam. And um, super elated, excited, and feeling extremely humbled, privileged, and privileged to have won this award two times in a row. And uh, this recognition obviously motivates me as an individual, a professional, and more importantly, a doctor, to strive and work tire tirelessly day and night to give the best to our patients. Now, uh, with this younger generation of doctors that we have right now that play a very critical role in healthcare service delivery, there are obviously multiple uh, things that one needs to work on to get such recognitions. And obviously, this couldn't have been possible without my wonderful team. But I think the crux of everything today lies in innovation. So when we speak about disruption and innovation, the difference is that disruption, you lower the cost. Innovation, you work towards increasing the value add that that particular service is bringing in. So my team is more focused on innovation, doing many firsts in the country, and always and forever having the patient at the center of all our discussions and the impact that it makes on the healthcare continuum of the patient as the highest priority. Let us hear about uh, those fuss. What, what work your team is, uh, in, uh, is doing at this point in time? So, um, Shivan, uh, Shivan, again, we are quite blessed and the list is long. But um, way back in the pandemic, uh, we were the first ones to j launch a COVID RT-PCR drive-through. That was our first, and then after that, we were the first in the country, the first private lab, to start something that we called as bacteriophage sensitivity testing that uh, helps to combat the rising uh, uh, issue of antimicrobial resistance. Apart from that, also, we have a lot of esoteric testing that we've started in-house that no one else... we. Apart from this, we also have multiple firsts when it comes to starting up new tests as well that we have launched. Like recently, we have launched an AI-powered allergy test that is the most comprehensive and extensive and diagnoses your allergies to the protein, that exact component that you're allergic to. It also gives you insights and to the patient and to the physician to understand the report and also understand the options that you have for next steps. So these are very small things, but adding value to something that has been happening for many years is something that my team gets very excited about. Absolutely. Talk, about, talk us through about the AMR challenge. And in, in India, we have, a, uh, you know, in rural areas, in two, tier two, tier three towns, we have uh, uh, pharmacists who are giving out, pres uh, without prescriptions, over the counter, they are giving antibiotics. Uh, how big of a challenge do you think, as you are one of the first companies you you uh, building a test for that and you've uh, been the first in that. Uh, how do you see this challenge in upcoming years? So, Shyam, this is a very interesting story and um, uh, there, there is a university or an institute in a country called Georgia and it's called the Ilyava Institute of Phage Therapy and they are about a hundred years old and their bacteriophages are sold over the counter and it is also like if someone has a burn instead of giving a dose of antibiotics they, they just pour the phage on it and if you go back to our own traditional and uh, stories and you and people say that the Ganges is pure why is the Ganges pure because it has bacteriophages inside it so again, keeping this in mind and having in mind the innovation that the countries abroad are doing with FAJ therapy, we have collaborated with such institutes to provide testing for anyone who has antibiotic resistance and is pan resistant. They do a bacteriophage sensitivity test with us and then we collaborate with that university to provide them the care and the medication and the therapy. So I think this is a very novel initiative and uh, the antimicrobial resistance that we are facing and talking about right now is very scary. So I think this is the step in the right direction for that.
Absolutely. What are few of the trends that you think uh, will happen in diagnostic space? And we have this, uh, uh, you know, home service of diagnostics available, which is plurging at this point in time. I mean, who doesn't want it? Uh, who doesn't want their tests to be done in their comforts of their home? Uh, what about the trends that you, you know, are witnessing and you think will happen in the next coming years? So, um, Shivam, I've taken uh, many lectures on this topic about the trends, but I'll keep it very short and something uh, that the viewers can also remember. And um, I, I usually um, compare the trends that we are to see in the years to come to this small device that we see in certain Asian restaurants is called a Lazy Susan. So Lazy Susan is basically like a wooden round rotating device that is kept on a table with all the food items, the condiments, the relishes on it. And the diners who are sitting around this round table just move that Lazy Susan and pick up the food that they want. So essentially what I'm trying to say is that the diners on this table are the patients and the Lazy Susan has your healthcare services. So right now what happens is that the patient is running from pillar to post, going to a pharmacy, getting his medicines, and then he's going to a lab to get his tests, then running to get his reports, then going to the hospital. But, but healthcare, the way that it is metamorphosizing and progressing is going to be very patient-centric. It'll, it'll be like if, if someone has a continuous glucose monitor on their arm that is, uh, that is attached, it'll measure their blood sugar value and suppose it's high, automatically it is going to send an alert to the lab that is further going to uh, relate to the physician who is going to further order tests from the same sensor that's already attached to him to do some more tests to find out his diabetic status and if it's an emergency. And if it is, then the same information is relayed to the emergency provider, that's an ambulance, and then the hospital. So the entire integration, the holistic approach where the patient is at the center and using that lazy Susan metaphor that I gave you, I think we are moving towards that and I think that is the future. Absolutely, patient centricity is the future. Thank you, Mr. Dank, for joining us Thank here. You. Lovely, you, lovely to speak to you.